Thinking about selling your home on your own? Trust me, you can do it. As a realtor with over 75 million client sales, I've seen it all and I've done it myself. Not once, but twice. The first time was with two little kids and a third on the way. And the second time, mid lockdown in 2020 with three kids under six running around. If I can handle that, I can definitely help you make this happen. So let's dive into exactly how you can sell your home without hiring an agent. Step one, decide when you're going to list your home. If possible, I recommend selling in the first half of the year, especially January through March, when there's a bigger gap between the number of buyers and sellers. Step two is to work backward from your target listing date and give yourself two months to prepare. Many people underestimate the time it takes to declutter, especially if they've lived there for a while. Go room by room, creating three piles. Pack, donate, and trash. This process can take longer than you expect, especially if you work full time or have kids, just be careful not to accidentally toss uh, your kid's favorite book. That could cause a problem. Step three is to do minor repairs, painting, and touch-ups. You know that loose cabinet door and wobbly handle? Yep, it's time to fix them. Sometimes a room's walls might be so worn that it's worth repainting the entire space. Freshen up the trim, especially baseboards and door frames. New paint there can really make a room pop. Step four. This step might be tough to do on your own, and here's why. It's called the endowment effect. This means people often place more value on things they own compared to things they don't. Take the mug experiment, for example. A group of people were offered a coffee mug to purchase. And the average price they were willing to pay was $2.75. The second group of people were gifted the same coffee mug, and then one week later, they were asked how much they would sell it for. The average answer was $5.50. This is natural human behavior, and it's relevant because step four is figuring out the listing price for your home. Use Redfin and Zillow to find homes similar to yours that have sold recently. Remember, the key is not to overvalue your home just because it's yours. The main factors to consider are location, size, number of bedrooms and bathrooms, and finishes. Next, decide on a pricing strategy, below market value, at market value, or above market value. Your choice depends on factors like demand, property condition, your timeline, and how your pricing compares with similar homes in your area. Remember, one of the biggest mistakes sellers make is thinking their home is the best on the block. Step five, once your home is prepped, it's time to hire a photographer and videographer. I always work with the same team because they're the best at what they do. Check out Drone Home Media and tell them Dimitri sent you. I don't get anything out of it. I just like to spread the word about quality small businesses. Now, at a minimum, get professional photography, a floor plan, and a 3D tour but I highly recommend a video as well. The goal is to get as many eyes on your home as possible and have the video evoke emotion. There's a reason car companies use video with music and storytelling in their commercials. Please, please, please do not make a video by turning photos into a slideshow that zooms in and out on each picture. That is not gonna get the job done. My rule for a property tour video is to avoid repeating the listing description. Tell the story of the home in a unique way and consider writing a rough script for that video's outline. Step six, once you get your professional photos and video, start posting about your home on all your social media channels. Don't stick to just one platform. We don't know where your buyer might come from or who might share it. I recommend posting on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, both long form and shorts, TikTok and LinkedIn. Use clips from the long video that you created and turn them into reels and shorts. Your goal is to get as many people as possible interested in viewing the property in person. Step seven, don't forget to put up a for sale sign in your yard. As a homeowner, you might be stuck with a basic for sale by owner sign, but it still helps. Step eight is designing brochures for your property using an app like Canva. Once the design is ready, find a professional printing company to print the brochures and floor plans on thick cardstock. Cheap paper looks unprofessional, so avoid it. Also confirm the printing and shipping timeline so your materials arrive before open houses. Step nine is to find a real estate office in your area that can list your home on the MLS, the main listing service that feeds into sites like Zillow, Realtor.com, Redfin. It usually costs around $500 to $1,000. Step 10 is to plan your showing schedule for the opening weekend. A two hour open house on both Saturday and Sunday works well, plus a midweek open house to catch buyers with flexible schedules. Include a broker open house for local realtors who have clients that may be interested in your property. Also, ensure your contact information is in the MLS for potential buyers to reach out to you for private shows. 
If you have kids or pets, it can be difficult to keep the house clean and tidy while all of this is happening. So I always recommend clients go away for the entire weekend. Ah, first one's here. First one's here. First one's here. In your case, one person gets to go away with the kids and the other parent stays to handle the open house and show it. Step 11, show time. Open houses, private showings, it's all about getting people in the door. If you nailed the price in your marketing, you should see good interest. But don't worry. Sometimes it does take a few weeks or even months to find the right buyer. Step 12, when you do receive an offer, make sure to verify financing with the buyer's lender or get proof of funds if it's a cash offer. Remember, everything is negotiable. Price, contingencies, closing dates, you know, more. Even if there's only one offer, there's room to negotiate for the best terms for you. Now, step 13, not all buyers waive the inspection. So be prepared. If an inspection is done, they may request repairs or credits. Sellers sometimes get emotional at this point. Emotional damage! So remember, just because you live with a wonky window and you think it's fine, doesn't mean that the buyer wants to live with it as well. Step 14, hire a real estate attorney to handle the purchase and sale agreement, also known as the PNS, and represent you at the closing. Do not go with an uncle who does criminal law to handle your real estate law. You wouldn't hire a sushi chef to handle your big southern themed barbecue party, would you? Now, step 16. Once the PNS is signed, there's a few important items to start crossing off your to-do list. If you have an oil tank or a leased propane tank, schedule the final reading to take place shortly before the closing date. Reach out to your local fire department to schedule the smoke and carbon monoxide, my God, carbon monoxide inspection. Reach out to your local water department to request a final water bill, unless you have a private septic system, in which case you contact the local company to perform the Title V inspection. Call your utility companies and let them know that you are moving. Lastly, your attorney will send you documents to sign and get notarized so that way they can handle the closing on your behalf and you do not need to be there the day of. Step 16 is to start packing. The average sale from offer to closing takes around six weeks. But hopefully, before you listed, a lot of items were already packed, donated, and thrown out. Book movers early, and don't leave anything behind unless the buyer requested it. Trust me, assuming they'll appreciate your old grill or building materials will cause issues at the final walkthrough. It doesn't matter if when you bought the house, there was stuff inside of it. This isn't a family tradition where you then pass it down to the next homeowner. Please get all your stuff out of the house. Get your stuff and get out. Step 17, the last step. Once all your belongings are out of the home, the buyer will do a final walkthrough. This is typically done the day before closing or the morning of. But you may be thinking, this is a lot of steps. Which ones are the most important for me to get right in order to maximize the sale of my home? If I had to pick, my answer is marketing. And these videos right here will give you a good idea of what a house should look like, both inside and out, and give you some ideas for what to say on camera when you are doing your own property tour. I hope you found this video helpful. And if you have any questions, all my contact information is in the description below. I'll see you guys on the next video.